but one of the big things you can do is make sure we have nutrition coming in, right? Our follicles love CoQ10, magnesium, um, cysteine, amino acids, fat soluble vitamins, healthy levels of cholesterol, right? So good nutrients coming in helps the follicles. If we're in a very free radical, high level of oxidative stress standpoint, oxidation is when you're losing electrons, your body needs a lot of antioxidants and nutrients and vitamin A, um, C and E and all these good nutrients. And if we don't get them, then that's going to cause oxidation. Think of oxidation as cutting the apple on the table, leaving it out and it starts to brown. You could squeeze some lemon juice on it or lime juice, which has vitamin C. And guess what? You would see no browning, right? So it's really important. Nutrition plays a big role with oxidation. Um, of course, blood sugar fluctuations are a big stress on the hormones. If our blood sugar is going up and down and we're surging insulin and surging cortisol and surging adrenaline, that's going to put stress on our adrenals. And our adrenals end up being the backup generator for our ovaries as we get closer to perimenopause, menopause. So as our follicular reserve starts to drop the amount of hormones, we have maybe our AMH starts to drop down a little bit or go up a little bit, which starts to signal um, egg quality problems, um, starts to go out of, out of balance. And then we start to have maybe a little bit of a rise in FSH and a little bit of a rise in LH, which is our pituitary screaming down to our ovaries saying, hey, make some hormone. And so as it starts to happen, if we put more stress on our hormones with surging insulin, surging prolactin, depleting our DHEA, surging cortisol, surging adrenaline, that's going to make it harder for our hormones to deal with healthy recovery. Our, our hormones tend to go in one of two directions. It's a balance, but we're either building up and being anabolic or we're dealing with stress and inflammation and being catabolic, right? And if our body is too catabolic, too geared towards inflammation, then we're breaking down faster than we build up. We want to be healthy in a state where we're more parasympathetic, where we're building up more than we're breaking down. That's how we age gracefully is that healthy anabolic to catabolic balance. And so the more stressed and inflamed we are, we switch that ratio where we're more catabolic to anabolic, less building up and more breaking down. We want to fix that. So again, the first thing is even out the blood sugar. Um, look at a lot of the toxins that are coming in, whether it's plastics, whether it's pesticides, whether it's mold toxins. These are all going to be very stressful on the ovaries, on the eggs, and they're going to be hormone mimickers. So they can really throw off the HPAG axis, hypothalamic, pituitary, adrenal, gonadal, gut axis, right? So it can really impact all of those things. So you want to look deeper at that. Um, of course, gut function plays a role because if we have gut problems, that's going to impact nutrition. That's going to impact absorption. Women are like five times more likely to have an autoimmune condition than a male. Well, guess where 80% of your immune system is? It's in your gut. And so when we look at immune imbalances, autoimmune potential issues, we always look at the gut because that's going to be a place where a lot of the autoimmunity starts. 